Hello and welcome to Chumming 101 number three, Chum Net Flow Rate. So in today's video, we are going to measure the disbursement rate for one block of frozen chum in six different chum bags. We've got the quarter inch mesh bait bag there. We've got the half inch. We've got three quarter inch mesh. We've got one inch and we've got one quarter and then a one inch by half inch chum cage. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So in today's video, I'm going to find out how long it takes for one block of frozen chum to run through six different mesh sized chum nets. So that's the plan. All right, plans have changed. Uh, basically, I've already went out and filmed the whole process, got the results. The thing though is, is I learned some other factors that kind of overwhelmed the actual results and made them kind of almost void. So uh, my plan is I'm going to just front load, give you the results, give you more importantly the things I've learned. And then for those that are interested in watching chum blocks kind of melt and flow. Plus uh, I was chumming enough where I attracted about an 8 foot bull shark. I called him Scary Jerry. Uh, he popped up and then I was flowing so much chum, he would hang around but he would kind of fall back into the shadows and then when I either shook a chum bag or make some movement, then he'd boom, he'd pop back up and just kind of like, oh. And it wasn't so much the chum I think as it was, he was just kind of hoping, oh, did he fall in? Did he fall in? <laughs> that type of thing. But uh, in general, I'll have that the last three quarters of the video. We'll be just kind of watching the process if you're interested in knowing how I did it. But uh, anyways, that is our new plan, so uh, let me show you what I found out. Now for the parameters for our testing, I was actually going to do this test four different times. Uh, once at the Seven Mile Bridge, and that was just going to be primarily the trial run. Uh, and then I would do it again out on the actual reef. Now this would occur now, kind of our pseudo winter time, even though it's mid 80s. Uh, but then I would do it again in the middle of summertime when the water temps and air temps would be 10 to 15 degrees higher. Uh, I set up anchor uh, just east of Fred the Tree on the Seven Mile Bridge. Uh, Google it, you'll find out where that's at. Uh, it was March 17th around 3.15 in the afternoon. The air temperature was around 83 degrees and the surface water temps was around 79 degrees. Uh, the flow of the current was roughly between two to three knots. I originally had set up up current from the bridge, but when I put the six different chum nets out, it created a ton of drag and it dragged anchor and it pushed me through the actual first bridge, finally locked up and I got situated between the two bridges. That current kind of gets uh, bottlenecked a little bit, so it kind of kicks up the current a little bit, uh, but not such a big deal. Uh, I brought six of my different mesh size nets. I had a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, one inch and a quarter, and the one inch by half inch cage. Uh, the chum block I was going to put in each one of those bags was the Tournament Master Green Label. It's a seven pound frozen block of ground up Menhaden. Now one of the most important parameters of this testing was that I was going to put the chum into the bags, into the water, and at that point I was just going to let them naturally dissipate, okay? I was not going to do any sorts of shaking or molesting them of any way. I was just going to let the current, the water temps basically dissolve them, let them flake off and just slowly dissolve on their own and that was going to be my parameters since I can control that. Now, because of the way I was testing in regards to just putting in the water, not molesting them at all, okay, uh, these are just basically frozen blocks of ice is really all it is. It's got meat chunks, but it's basically a solid piece of ice. Now, by just putting in the water, what happens, what you think would happen, uh, it's surrounded by water, so it all basically melts fairly evenly, okay? It just goes from the outer edge and then it thaws going towards the center. Now in the case of these chum blocks what it did is it would do that. 
all right? And I could stick my finger through the soft parts of the defrosted parts and it would go in about a half inch to three quarters of an inch, but yet still be a solid piece of chum, okay? Because I think they're either compressed or when they're frozen together, or it's actually kind of a liquid state, it's very compressed when it's frozen. So even when it thaws, it still stays kind of fibrously condensed. So that half inch to three quarter is really just loose, but because it's just sitting there, it forms kind of like a, a meat blanket, a uh, meat insulation around it. And uh, that actually slows down the melting process because it insulates that center core, all right? And because I wasn't moving it, uh, those outside external places just kind of held that uh, cool temps inside and it made it last way longer than I thought it would. Now the second factor which kind of just made this whole testing void was the chum net. Now originally, and I'm assuming most people would think, well it would be based on the mesh size. The larger the hole, the more chum is going to flow out of it, the faster that chum block is going to disintegrate. Yes, in theory that's going to be it, but no, that wasn't it, okay? Because of what I mentioned earlier in regards to that meat blanket insulating it, Really what these nets did by the way I was testing it is they just held that chum in the water. They didn't really do anything. So yeah, some of the pieces fell off easier with the bigger net, but because of that meat blanket, not much of that chum was falling off. The bigger factor which kind of makes this whole thing void is the fisherman's shake. And that's basically, you have that chum in the water, okay, and it's really not flowing that much, what do you do? You don't just kind of like, oh, we'll just wait. No, you walk over there, you grab the bag, and you shake it, okay? And what that shaking action does is it makes this mesh net almost into sort of a, uh, a cheese grater, okay? Just like a block of cheese, you run that cheese grater, and it basically fluffs off a, a section of that cheese off the side. That's basically what the mesh does to that meat blanket, that insulation around the chum block. As soon as you shake that, it basically just scours off that whole edge of the chum block right down to the frozen hard part, and then it can't really pull that frozen part off, but it knocks off all that insulation, and that chum flows out of there. If you've got the larger net that doesn't kind of bulk it up, it just flows right out. If you use the smaller net, then it kind of builds up on the down current side of it and just gets stuck there. But in general though, regardless of that, that meat blanket gets fluffed off and then that exposes the the uh, solid frozen core right to the warmer temperature water and that is going to cause that core block to defrost even faster okay so that's kind of what makes my testing somewhat not really practical because most people are not going to just put the chum block off out in the behind the boat and never touch it every person is going to go out there and shake it try to get it started faster or if the fish are starting to bite or they're leaving to start shaking it more so that's kind of a big factor that kind of just kind of uh, was an aha moment for me and finally probably the most important thing i learned out of all of this and it kind of relates to just the fishing industry in general is it doesn't matter how much chum that you take out it doesn't matter which chum that you use uh, the important thing is, is that the end result that you're looking for is what is most important. What you're looking for when you're out there, specifically almost yellowtailing, is you want to use enough chum that it attracts the yellowtail up behind your boat. Okay, that's number one. And number two, it keeps them there. And then number three, it doesn't overfeed them to the point where they're not going to be really aggressive about eating your bait and allowing you to catch them. So it doesn't matter if you use just one block of chum or you stick five blocks in there and a, a small mesh net or a big mesh net, it's how much chum is getting behind your boat. Is it enough to get those yellowtails up and feeding behind you? Is it not so much that you're overfeeding them and they're eating and leaving or you're flowing a bait back but they're just like, oh, I'm stuffed, I can't eat anymore, and they're not biting. And that's the key thing that you wanna keep in mind when we're discussing chumming. In regards to the baseline testing, uh, you can just continue to watch the, the rest of the video. I basically filmed every 10 minutes so you can kinda see the progress of all the chum bags. 
Uh, final results though, it took uh, approximately one hour and 40 minutes to flow through the inch and a quarter of the commercial chum bag. Now remember, this bag had zero issues with uh, pieces of meat flaking off the chum block and getting stuck in the net. No, it, it just flowed right through this, so it was kept fairly clean except for the meat blanket issue. Uh, however, you have to remember that sore, that core block of ice stayed frozen all the way for an hour and 40 minutes until it got to the size of roughly a golf ball and was allowed to fit through the mesh net and that was the end for that. Okay, so it took a long time. Uh, I would say the inch mesh net took probably hour and um, 50 minutes, two hours. The uh, three quarter inch and the uh, chum cage probably took about two hours and 10 minutes and that's with a little bit of shaking at the end. The, uh, the biggest part that I would say is a good takeaway is the small mesh net. These, the most popular one, the half inch, the little bait one. Uh, they're basically useless in regards to chumming for yellowtails out there. Uh, the end result for them, I probably, after two hours, 20 minutes, two and a half hours that it took for the chum block to totally uh, defrost, so there was no ice part left um, and it was just all loose bit. I probably only lost about 25% of the mass being able to flow through the quarter inch mesh. I would say in that same time frame, including shaking and trying to get as much as I could out in that short time frame, about 50% uh, of the chum out of this half inch chum, um, chum net. And realistically that is just not usable. Um, like I mentioned before, the factors you're looking at are attracting the fish behind your boat and keeping them engaged while not overfeeding them. What these bags will do is when you first put the, the chum in there, it starts defrosting. The first thing that dissipates is the oils, the blood, and then you get small particles, quite a bit of small particles. And that will attract the yellowtails and the fish behind your boat. So that's effective for that part of it. But quickly what happens is that uh, the liquid portion, the scent portion of it dissipates and finishes. Then the uh, smaller bits get used up and they don't flow as much. And what happens after that, those fish lose interest and then they, they take off. And then all of a sudden your, your fishing might be great in the beginning, but then it just drops off and then it's very hard to catch anything. Uh, that's the issue with using these bags. They just don't keep a consistent and enough of a flow to attract and keep interested. So you really kind of really want to stay with these if you're going to be very serious about specifically about yellowtailing on the reef. That's why I developed the three quarter inch mesh. Uh, it will continually keep that flow. It will use more chum but it keeps you in that ballpark where as long as you keep feeding it, uh, it'll push enough chum to keep most of the time those uh, schools behind your boat. All right, so that's the basic meat and potatoes of it. Um, I will be doing a follow-up video where I go out to the reef and I'll actually do the fisherman shake in more of a natural time frame and get the results to see how long a chum block will last. Uh, but otherwise, feel free to continue and watch the rest of the video. If you like watching chum blocks melt or how long it takes to melt an ice cube. Uh, or if you want to take a look at Scary Jerry, uh, keep on watching. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you next video. Oh, if you need a chum net, I got them. Ten different variances. So uh, check them out. www.allaboutthebait.com Hey everybody, how we doing today? Beautiful day here in the Florida Keys. Got some nice sun, the winds are dropping. Uh, I'm over here at the Seven Mile Bridge. I'm right by Fred the Tree back there. Uh, today I'm gonna be working on the uh, Chumming 101 uh, flow rates for different size chum nets. So I'm gonna come out here, anchor up, put out six different chum nets and cages, and then uh, show how long it takes to disperse one block of chum. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my temperatures, air temperatures, temperatures of the water, um, the knots of the current, how fast the current's going, and then I'll get anchored up and then uh, start putting out the different chum bags and just laying it out there. 
Um, I'm going to do a separate video with just the, the cut down informational part, but I'll also do this kind of video to show what I'm doing. Got the rods there. I brought some uh, frozen mullet and some other bait so I could do that while I'm waiting because it's going to take a couple hours for some of the smaller mesh nets to work. But otherwise, that is the plan. If you chum, they will come. So for my setup, one of the things I'm going to need is water temperature um, as well as air temperature and all that stuff. But what I've got is this uh, pool thermometer. So I'm going to throw that in the water, uh, just get a general water temps. Uh, I'll be doing this, um, the seven mile bridge during this mild winter time. Uh, I'll also do another one during the summertime and then same for out on the actual reef. Uh, I'll do one pretty soon next time I can run out there and then also in the summertime because water temps, air temps will make a big difference in regards to how fast those uh, chum blocks will uh, disintegrate. So I'm going to get these basic statistics and then uh, we'll get ready to get uh, set up here. Okay, today we're gonna to be testing out six different size mesh holes. So we've got the quarter inch, I call it the bait net there. Then we've got this one, which is a half inch. Then we've got three quarter inch mesh, one inch mesh, and then one and a quarter inch mesh. And uh, this one is one inch by half inch, the cage. So those are the, each one is going to get a block of chum go in the water there and then I'm just going to take a look to see how long it takes to defrost and disperse basically one block of chum. The chum we'll be using is Tournament Master Chum Green Label. All frozen and ready to go. All right, I'm going to get all these nets preloaded and then uh, get them in the water and set the timer and take a look at how long it takes. This is the chum cage. Drops right in there. And it's ready to go. All right, so I've got uh, individual nets loaded with one chum block. So I'm just gonna kind of space them out here however I can. Hopefully don't sink. And then got a stopwatch and then I've got it on the clock. It's 3.18 p.m. And then uh, we'll go from there. So let me get these things loaded up. Here's kind of an overview of our chum setup. Got the half inch, three quarters, one inch, one and a quarter, chum cage, quarter inch. Making a nice chum trail there. These uh, chum bags are causing so much drag. It pulled my anchor. I've been slowly edging towards the bridge. So I think we're locked up now, so we should be okay. But I don't care. I'll just drift out until it stops. I've got my good, uh, reef anchor out so it should hold once it finds a spot but chum is flowing the current is starting to pick up so this shouldn't be uh too long here all right we're 10 minutes in so let's take a look where we're at these guys are all still pretty solid it's getting a little soft there it's getting down there the uh one that i figure is going to go pretty quick is uh this guy here but still solid bricks. Oh, we're drifting. So uh, yeah, we'll keep on going here. All right, we're 20 minutes in. So let's take a look where we're at. As you can see, the uh, chum is just starting to loosen up there, but very little is gonna flow out of there. Uh, this is the half inch. That's kind of the most standard bag out there. It's starting to kind of break up. I am starting to see chunks flowing out of the three quarter inch. So you can see a little bit bigger chunks there. Uh, I've got the one inch. Same deal. It's definitely a little bit smaller. And then the one and a quarter inch there. Yeah, bigger chunks are flowing out of that. But all in all, they're still pretty solid chunks of ice. So uh, let's keep an eye out. There's the cage, still pretty solid. So let's to give it another 10 minutes here. Man, I hope that's not a snake and I hope he's not gonna drop it on me. It looks like, oh, it's like a needlefish or a uh, houndfish probably. <laughs> he's all happy. All right, we're at 30 minutes. 
take a look here. Still pretty solid there. It's definitely getting soft. Yeah, I can get down about half inch before it gets to like the icy center. These guys are still it's starting to pack up in the ends there on this a half inch because it can't get through there where this is staying pretty clean on the end that's the three quarters because when it melts off it flows out there same deal here it's starting to kind of build up a little bit along the end chum cage pretty clean a little bit of build up on the end there but it's just melting nicely we've got the one inch mesh clean on the bottom it's just whatever defrost off it just comes right off because the uh, message mesh is large enough yeah and that's that's falling apart there it's got some seaweed on it but yeah it's it's falling away pretty quickly there so that's 30 minutes all right we're 40 minutes in let's take a look quarter inch mesh yeah it's definitely gooey it's kind of stuck there uh, mainly the oils and juices are flowing out but the actual meat is sticking in there got the uh, half inch there's still a little bit of solid ice in the middle but you can see it's kind of just getting packed in there most of the juices are flowed out the blood the oil and then the meat components are getting stuck against the mesh you can see how much cleaner the three quarter inch mesh is. That's because as it defrosts, that meat is able to flow out of there. But still soft, but uh, if you poke into it, you can feel the, the ice in the center. One inch, still got a decent block there. The cage. still fairly solid it's kind of got a build up on the edge there and then we've got the old uh, inch and a quarter and it's just dispersing as it goes even if I just touch it a little bit chunks are falling off of it but nothing is really getting held up at the net so we'll give it another 10 minutes all right just past the 50 minute mark there so let's take a look Here's the quarter inch. Still got a little bit of form to it, but it's just basically piling up on the outside edge there. Same thing with the half inch. There's still a little bit of a block left in there, but otherwise it's just getting jammed up there. What smaller piece and oils is pushing through. And then the three quarters. I get my finger in about a half an inch and then I hit solid frozen part but it's clean as stuff to frost off of it it just flows right out of the bag chum cage got a little build up there but it's flowing okay same thing with our one inch I guess that's yeah, still that kind of half inch insulation and then if you can see there that's our one and a quarter it's definitely getting down there so not much more on that one all right we just cycled one hour so let's take a look this is our quarter inch there's still a block in there but a lot of it is just half of the block or more is packed up along the bottom there this is our half inch mesh same with that there's a little bit left probably about that thick of uh, frozen bits still you can see this how much cleaner it is but this is real soft stuff above it and then the inside core is still frozen but you can see the amount of buildup there that it can't fit through the mesh where this one's very clear the three quarter inch the one inch as well 
got the soft outside. Still can't get my finger through it, so it's still solid there. That's the one inch. Our cage. Staying pretty clean, surprised about that. Seems like it's more insulated than the others, but still fairly solid there. And then our one and a quarter. Still got a decent chunk there, but bits are flowing off of it. I'm trying to not to disturb them as much as possible. Any movement really knocks off pieces on these big ones, but that's one hour. All right, just hit an hour and 10 minutes. So let's take a look. Almost got a bag of mush. There's still a little bit of a block left in there. Same thing with the half inch mesh. You can still feel the somewhat of a solid uh, chunk in there. Yeah, there's still ice in the center. And then we've got the three quarters. That's starting to fall apart. The good old one inch. Still a little bit of ice streak in the center there. Still holding some shape in the cage. And the uh, one and a quarter is getting down. So still got some meat left. All right, we just cycled a uh, one hour, 20 minutes. So let's take a look here. Still pretty much a, just a big clump of uh, defrosted meat in this one. Not much can flow out of here. There's still a little bit of block left there. I could feel a little hard spots. Kind of see there, it's building up down there, but still got the core part there. This is broken up pretty nicely. Now it's just getting trapped because the holes are too small for the, uh, the chunks there. Uh, I feel a little bar of frozen piece in there. Otherwise, the outside is pretty soft. Same thing on the three quarter. Yeah, it's pretty thin now. So there's probably about that thickness of a icy part left. Yeah, the one inch has uh, flowed through pretty well. Still a little ice chunk in there. And our inch and a quarter mesh. That's kind of the uh, what's left in all of them. Maybe an inch thick piece of frozen part, but it's fallen through. All right, let's see what happens here. I saw a big old shark. Where'd he go? <laughs> Around here somewhere. <whistles> Big boy. Oh, there he is. There he comes. Right there. Oh, Lordy. He got a big head. <laughs> If you chum, the scary things will come. There he is. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Don't eat my chum bags. I'm not done with my test. <laughs> All right, we're at an hour and a half. I'll right, we'll take a look here. We've got to watch the hands. Scary Jerry is around. All right. So, oh, uh, there's a tiny bit of chunk left, probably about a hockey puck size of frozen parts. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you can kind of see the chunk there. Uh, that's probably about a half an inch of insulation. Meat blanket around the frozen chunks. Half inch. Yeah. Still got that little chunk in there, but 
it's mainly just maintaining and holding the uh, bigger chunks there the three quarters still can't push my finger through but you can see how deep the uh, the meat blanket goes and then we've got the one inch even cleaner even less feels colder but you can kind of see how far it goes down before it hits the frozen so it's still got more to go and then our inch and a quarter is pretty much now there's still a little bit of ice there that's still frozen right there so you can kind of see that's that's the frozen bits got a little bit more to go scary jerry is back scary jerry i see you Oh, and then he's gone into the deep. Gone into the deep. <laughs> he's just out there waiting for me to fall in. There he is. Big old, big head, scary Jerry. <laughs> he's all, fall in, fall in, fall in, fall in, fall in. Not going to do it, Jerry. All right, we just cycled hour and 40 minutes here. Take a quick review. No scary Jerry. And this is just a big old pocket of meat now. I think there, there might be a little bit of ice left, but otherwise it's just a big, big pocket of meat. You can kind of see the cage. That's kind of a solid mass there. A little bit of hangers ons, but they're flowing out of the cage pretty well. And we got the half inch, same kind of deal. Uh, pretty much most of the ice is gone. It's got a little chunk there, uh, but mostly it's made up of just the loose meat that just can't flow through the mesh because it's too small. And then the half inch, I mean the three quarter inch. It's got a little meat pocket here. Still frozen bit in the middle there. And we've got the fairly similar with the one inch. Even a little bit cleaner. And then we've got pretty much the uh, I think the inch and a half, you can call it done. Yeah, that would be it for the inch and a quarter. So that has clean as a whistle there. So that's about a minute. One, oh, I see a fin there. Wait, that didn't look like a shark. That looks like a tarpon. Oh no, that's a shark. <laughs> now he's camouflaging himself as a tarpon. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Go ahead, jump in the water. Not today, Jerry. Not today. All right, we're at uh, one hour and 50 minutes. So let's see what we got here. Take a look for scary Jerry. Same deal. I think I would say we are done with any frozen bits. It's all soft. So the rest of it is just gonna end up sitting in there and there'll be some bits coming out. You see some real tiny bits, but uh, in general, most of it is just gonna stay like that. Uh, we've got the chum cage. It's got a little bit of frozen block to it. Just a bit, about dollar bill, dollar bill size there. Otherwise chunks are still flowing out, keeping it fairly clean. The uh, half inch, kind of like the uh, quarter inch. There's a tiny, well I could poke through the ice now, so it's pretty much done. 
it's just a block of uh of meat loose meat and it's large enough that if you're shaking it uh you can get a decent chum flow but then eventually the, the smaller ones will work through and then uh the bigger ones will be stuck in this mesh net i'd probably say you can lose probably another 25 percent of the small bits and then it'll be pretty much done flowing here's the three quarters staying pretty clean it's still got a, about a well it's breaking up there so that's almost gone you can see how much will flow out of there uh but it's kept it pretty clean by just anything that was loose was flowing out so it's pretty much going to be the same with this so yeah pretty much the same there and of course our inch and a quarter is uh already done oh there's scary jerry hey jerry <laughs> you're a big one <laughs> dang he's probably a good eight footer plus big old bull shark all right we are at the two hour mark right about now two hours so let's take a look here we've got our quarter inch mesh and it is still probably five out of the six pounds of chum okay because that mesh size is not going to allow meat through it so that's still there our cage got a little bit of a brick left but as you can see it it falls apart really easily and if i just shook that through it's almost gone our half inch mesh you can see how much it has trapped because it just can't make it through that mesh um if i shake it it's still getting some but not a lot then we've got our three quarters mesh that's defrosted there's a little little frozen parts in there but in general that's that shake it and look how much comes out of there it's ready to go and our one inch is pretty much just got remnants in there i mean it's done i don't know is that a oh that's a little frozen bits there <laughs> so that's pretty much done and on there so that is our final two hour wrap up now there is one big caveat to this test and that's the fisherman's shake and that's basically is rarely are you going to put these chum bags out and just let them naturally uh, melt and kind of flow out there you're always going to end up shaking it okay and mainly because of this reason that there are pieces in there but it, it traps itself and there's not enough disruption by the current or the waves unless you're in really choppy waters to really move that meat around and to find those holes but if i shake it you see how much more meat comes out uh same thing with this three quarter look how much comes out i mean i would say for my testing of untouched nets uh you could reduce that time by at minimum half so if you have somebody shaking it every five minutes or so uh this could have lasted two hours but if you have somebody shaking it it's only going to at last an hour maybe 45 minutes the reason being is this mesh becomes like almost a cheese grater so when that block of chum is frozen it starts defrosting on the outsides and becomes very soft but it becomes more like a blanket and it just insulates that center part and prevents it from melting okay and it gets a little bit of movement and that's what knocks off a few pieces of it but when you shake it okay that's like a cheese grater effect it just rips into that soft part and just tears it off the bigger the mesh the bigger chunks that'll flow off and then that exposes that frozen center right to the water okay and that that creates that faster thaw so that fisherman shake makes a big difference but this just gave you a, a real basic ballpoint uh look how little chum is flowing from there but if i start shaking it 
there's not much oil left, but you can see how much meat will come out because it allows those uh, pieces to kind of disrupt and uh, find those holes. And you can see how much faster that these uh, chum blocks would be uh, disintegrate with the shaking method. But there's no way for me to measure that part, so I didn't really want to do it in the beginning. All right, wrapping things up. We've got two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, the only chum I've got out is the quarter inch mesh. And you can see it's not dropping at all. Pretty much the same thing with the uh, half inch. Um, if I shake it, I can get some meat out, but on its own, there's no oils, no blood, there's no scent coming out. Uh, as it's just sitting on itself, there's no meat coming out. So it's really pretty much doing nothing. Uh, if I'm gonna sit here and shake it and just continually shake it, I can get some of the meat out but really it's going to be scentless, flavorless, not much to it. And it would be a lot of work to keep doing that. That's kind of the why the half inch is not really effective enough, even though it is the most widely used uh, chum bag out there. And that is also why I came out with the three quarter inch, because that's the smallest one that is actually usable. Uh, so these leftovers, I'll throw them in a Ziploc bag. I could still use them for, uh, working the uh, back country, using them for catching uh, pinfish on the flats, just getting some sort of scent in the water to try to attract a fish. But for chumming for the, the reef and the bridges and stuff, uh, it's definitely not enough flow to keep the fish interested. So I would uh, definitely move up in the uh, mesh size. Okay, so that is how long one block of frozen chum will last in a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, one and a quarter, and one inch by half inch cage. Uh, the key thing to remember though, that is probably the, the longest that you can make a chung block last because I stayed away from shaking it. I just let the current slowly defrost it and let it slowly kind of disengage from itself and flow in the current. In real life, somebody will be shaking that chum to get it to flow faster. Uh, the most important thing that you're looking for is not how long the chum will last or, or how much it'll flow. It's how much you need to keep the fish interested and behind your boat, but not overfeed them so that they're still going to be actively feeding and eating your bait. So that's what you're really looking for. And that's why it's important to have multiple sizes of mesh, or keep it a constant eye on your chum flow. Once that chum stops flowing, they're going to disengage and take off. Okay, and it'll be a lot harder. It's almost more efficient to keep a lot more flow than you're comfortable with flowing out, keep those fish engaged, and really pound them and fill up your cooler or catch as many as you want. And then you can reduce when you're, you've caught everything that you need. But uh, anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next video.